Over the years, golf has very much had a reputation for being a privileged game for those from a predominantly white background. But with perhaps the greatest golfer to have ever picked up a club coming from mixed race heritage, is the Tiger effect really starting to make a difference to the diversity within the sport? This is the story of two people who are trying to make sure that it is, while creating a legacy of their own. My name is Trey Niven and I'm a top 50 UK golf coach. Hey guys, I'm Nicola Bennett, I'm 27 years old and I'm a professional golfer. I coach anyone from beginners to professionals. I really like when I see players with a smile on their face enjoying the game. What I enjoy the most about coaching is giving people the opportunity to be confident, to become the best versions of themselves and to make this game more inclusive and more diverse. I'd really like to encourage more people to take up the game that wouldn't have necessarily had the chance to do so before. Born 1998, I didn't watch a lot of Tiger when he was killing it and winning everything, so kind of started watching golf a little bit later on to his dominance. So I've seen previous, like going on the YouTube, seeing the things that Sky put in and of him winning and, and, and the PJ Tour and the majors. Um, he's definitely a role model. I started playing golf at around about 10 years old and I started because my dad dragged me and my sister down to the range after being seeing Tiger Woods and absolutely idolising him. He was like, I have to try this now. And um, he gave us both like a bucket of ball to share. And that's how it all sort of started. Everything stemmed from that. Nobody in the family played golf and it was my gran who actually got me started off with a plastic set of clubs. I think it was for a Christmas or a birthday. Um, and I went up to the local cricket field and started hitting these plastic clubs, plastic balls across there pretty well. If I can, I can't really remember, but she said it's pretty good. Um, and then, yeah, just sparked it from there. Just started going for some group coaching, um, got better and just progressed and progressed up to a pretty good standard. That was around when I was seven or eight years old. Have you heard of Young Gun before? <laughs> <laughs> Young Gun um, was like a, one of them junior box sets, so I had, had one of them. And they're colour coded, so you, as you get taller, you go up to the next colour set. So I think I went through a couple of sets of them as I started to, as I started to grow. And then, um, yeah, I got a pro first proper set. I must have, been, must have been around 12 or 13. I've forgotten what they were called. Young, I think. I think that's what they were called. <laughs> like a blue and grey set. Just a few clubs in them, but they was absolutely tiny. And I remember, I think they are called Young because some of the kids that I teach at the moment use them. And I look at how, how tiny the putter is. I was like, I can't believe I actually used that at one stage in my life. <laughs> golf for me always used to be about playing. Playing golf all day, every day. Getting dropped off before mum went to work and then being there all day until maybe she finished work six, seven o'clock. And it was all about playing only, only really up until recently it's been more about coaching and what can I do to help other people possibly get into the game and just, yeah, breed some new generation of golfers, really. And with that in mind, and following a chat with the founder of Black British Golfers, Ray Nyabola, Trey set up a group coaching session in his local area for Black British ladies. That was back in October 2021. And ever since, the gatherings have been going from strength to strength. The hardest thing is we all do this. When the ball's on the ground, we want to hit down to make the ball pop up. If we lean back, you catch that part of the ball and it just, everyone's like, why is this not going in the air? And it's usually the leading back bit. So wait forward so we can hit down and, and pop it up. Good strike. Come in, come in. First time playing golf? Is it? No, you played before? Okay, come and join, join the gang. Right, let me let me show you first a couple of things. So, are you both right-handed? Um, yeah. Both right-handed, yeah? yeah. Right-handed, great. So, which hand is on top of the club for me? Left. Have a look, which one? Left. 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 Yeah, so when we do right-handed shots, it's always the target side hand that comes on the club first. Right hand on the bottom, yeah? And then if you look at the girl's chip in there, can you see how close the feet are together? Really close stance to begin with, and then we'll see how you go from there, okay? The sessions came about initially over a Zoom call. So we got ladies in the UK, Black British golfers, on a Zoom call, and we just asked them what was stopping them from getting into golf originally. Um, and we just spoke to those ladies, myself and Ray from Black British golfers, and just 
covered some of the myths associated with why they couldn't get into the game. Some of the things from, from dress to like a male white dominated sport, they just didn't feel like they were part of that golf club community and it was just not a nice situation to hear them say some of those things so if we have them at a facility like this like at the driving range there's no dress code there's no real rules and they can come down and and play pretty freely. I've been coming since I think the autumn of last year and at first it was really daunting to come down you know, I've driven to golf courses before got as far as the car park then I've gone a little bit further and gone to the shop because I thought, oh, I need to have golf clothes if I want to play golf. And I've heard terminologies like driving range and the course and not knowing what it meant. And when we first came here, we had like a school lesson, big screen, projector screen, and all the terminologies and all the positionings was all explained to you. You could come in leisure wear. You didn't have to wear, you know, your golfing clothes and spend a packet. And it did start making me feel that actually I can and I will and I'll continue coming. I think it's built my confidence and it's given me the I can attitude. It's great to see that can-do mindset and confidence evolve for black golfers or those from a minority background within the sport. But that hasn't necessarily always been the case for those trying to find their way in the game. Well done. I wouldn't say there's any active racism towards me um, that's maybe direct there's a lot of passiveness so it's like oh i'll be on the range people walk past you in the next tiger woods or even things at school like let me touch your hair and let me do that because it's different and you look a little bit different people do it in a passive way so it's like the next tiger woods comment is one like are you saying that because i'm good at golf are you saying that because of what i look like like why are you saying that sometimes it can be non-verbal um, sometimes it's very instinct orientated from people's behaviours, things like um, being in envir environments where people come and deliberately shake hands to everyone around you but yourself. I don't think that you could put that down to anything else but racism. Looks sometimes um, being dismissed, things coincidentally happening. I think a lot of that boils down to racism. But I think because stereotypically it is such a white dominated sport, um, people sort of don't want to let, I think racist people don't want to let people from different backgrounds into their society and those boundaries are definitely breaking. I think it's because of social media and seeing um, more people, maybe their face is shown on TV, their face is shown behind a camera actually playing golf, whereas before, I mean the only person you can think of is probably Tiger Woods, um, like in the 2000s. and earlier on from that as well. So I definitely think it's gradually changing, maybe not as quick as we'd like to, but it definitely is starting to possibly move. On a scale of one to 10, I'd say, I'd say three in terms of where I think it should be. Coming from one default for a long time, I'd say it's pushed up to about three from um, good people representing the game and from getting more influences from different backgrounds and cultures involved. I think that's definitely helped to amplify the inclusivity. Definitely something that I've done, uh, even for black ladies in my community, is putting on events, putting on opens, putting on clinics, hours of coaching where you're getting people from that same community or that same background, a lot of the same faces together. And all of a sudden, the middle-aged white man that's walking down the, the golf club and actually looking at oh, what's going on over there. They're, they're asking questions about it. So that those faces over there are being seen as opposed to if there's maybe one, two or the other, they're just strolling past, not looking. So getting people together in groups from, doesn't even have to be black, can be Asian, can be Indian, anyone from those demographics together. And then people will start turning heads and looking and you just make people aware that you that you are there. That's something that uh, that Ray from Black British Golfers always says that we are here. People who are running the game should just be a bit more hands-on and think, right, what can we do outside of the box to get people into the game who's typically not inside the box already? So that might be doing um, collaborations with people in different fields who have got big audiences watching what they're doing, 
to bring people into the game and people might hand out leaflets and what I do personally in nail shops and churches and places where you're not typically going to get golfers to bring them into the game. Golf Foundation um, and Grassroots, which is funded by HSBC, they are going into schools all around the UK and giving children free golf lessons to give them the opportunity to try golf and bring them into the game, which is really helpful. And it's that platform which has allowed Nicola to follow her passion for coaching and to try and reach children from all backgrounds who maybe wouldn't ordinarily get the chance to give golf a go. I think between the age of zero to seven, it's really important for kids to discover who they are as people, but they need to feel included in everything they're doing. So for example, when I'm teaching my kids on a Saturday, I'll say, right, do you guys want to use blue cones or do you want to use red cones? So they feel like they're involved. And that definitely helps their self-esteem and confidence. So I think stuff like that, you should really be like that with kids. You get 20? Oh my goodness, well done. <laughs> Coming up after the break, Nicola and Trey talk about what golf can teach us off the course and provide tips for you to improve your game. Instead of my hands being forward, I'm just going to bring them back a bit and get that nice glide. Hi, I'm Nicola Bennett. My name is Trey Niven. And here's some of my top tips. To help you play better golf. Right, so the ball striking aspect to your irons. This is something that we see the best women and the best men in the world do so, so well. So I've got a little tip for you here. If you take your regular setter with a mid iron, and that could be with a ball position right through the middle of your stance, I'm just gonna simply roll that ball, maybe one, two rolls forward. Now, what you can see, that ball is further forward than where it should be usually. And if you can see, if I just make a move down to the ball, you can see what I've got to do to make good solid contact with that golf ball. I've got to start shifting the weight forward. This could be the hip, can be the center of the chest on top of the golf ball to make good solid contact. I'm going to give this one a go now. So regular setup. I'm just going to try and picture myself moving forwards onto this golf ball to make good contact. So that one there was struck pretty well. You can see the ball, ball first contact before the divot. Do that and you'll strike your irons beautifully. Okay guys, moving on to chipping. We've just missed the green on this wonderful par four and we need to get up and down to save our par. So, usually a lot of people have their hands forward in chipping, which is great to play a nice low chip in. However, just so that we get a more consistent strike, I'm just gonna bring my hands back a bit so it stops the leading edge from digging into the ground but almost treats the bounce angle like a boat. We want that boat to slide on the grass so we get that nice contact, okay? So instead of my hands being forward, I'm just gonna bring them back a bit and get that nice glide. The game of golf to me means opportunities to be the best version of myself. I think that it's unlimited the benefits you get to golf, how it can really curve you as a person and just manifest so many positive things into your life from learning how to be articulate, coming from more of a um, lower class background in this environment, learning how to be present at presentations and engaging in corporate environments and just having etiquette, waiting your turn, decision making, all these things really do transition into life. I think it's the most beneficial sport, genuinely. It can lead you on to so many um different directions. There's not just the one route of being stuck in your town, doing the same old thing and seeing the same people. Golf is global. I think the opportunities are endless with golf. It can really take you in so many different places and seeing different parts of the world and just interacting and making contacts with people as well because golf isn't just a sport. You can People also use it as a business tool. You can go for a round of golf and chat with someone if that's your line of work rather than go for a meeting go for a round of golf you'll get far more enjoyment out of that you'll get a lot more out of that person me even being here 
doing this what I am today. I wouldn't have been able to do this without golf. So it definitely does lead you on to some places that aren't imaginable, really. Organisations and firms have golf days where people could interact and build relations. So I think it provides a lot of opportunities. It's given me a lot of stability and it's really grown me as an individual, just the experiences, even from turning um, professional from being an amateur, the changes that were made, the patience that I had to have, the resilience and being able to persevere. The games taught me that. Even you know, being by myself has given me a lot of time to think, overthink even sometimes. Um, taught me how to speak to people properly and just conduct myself in a professional way. So the sport's given me a lot and I hope I can give a lot back to the sport. absolutely love it and they don't even know the indirect effects that it's having on their lives just team building working together communicating having patience and they're really just enjoying it 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 10 out of 10 i've learned how to keep my shoulders in line with like my legs and i have to make sure that i'm in the right space so that i can hit the ball properly right girls we're going to play a game called bullseye but She's very helpful and we love the warm-ups when she plays the music. She makes it hopefully easier and she makes it a lot better for me to understand. From seeing the smiles on the kids' face, from seeing them elevate, from seeing them have a good time, from seeing them not worry about anything and just be present with the game, it just gives me so, so much satisfaction. Feet close, club right in the middle, and it's really light shots to begin with. Not this. <laughs> we don't need too much power yet, just nice and short, yeah? In the bucket, show me that. There you go. If you practice it first without a ball, so left hand on top. That's it, left hand on top. Good, club head at the ball. This hand a little bit more over. There you go. And then see if you can do what I just did, back and through. There you go. So start here. There you go, and then back and through. Yes, well done. How good was that? That was really good. <laughs> that was really good. Five. Yes. <laughs> Start here. Hands a bit closer together. Perfect. Just lean the hands forward a little bit. Perfect. Back and through. Wow. What a shot. You know how good that is to hit that bucket on the first shot? You've never done it before. I think you've done it before. <laughs> I'm trying to achieve growth within unrepresented groups. Uh, even just seeing the session snowball from one or two ladies at the beginning to now we've got like 30 ladies in a group chat that are constantly talking about golf. Like for me, that's growth and that's introducing the game to potentially people who would never have the opportunity to do so without the help of these classes and being in this community of support. I really wanted to get into golf, um, something I thought about ready for my retirement. I'm tired now. Uh, and I'll get a lot out of it. Actually, it's good to get out in the fresh air, exercise. And it really wasn't something that I would instantly have gone to on my own. When I go walking, um, I'm always invited to come and play. The ladies always say, oh, you need to come around. And then there was one guy who said, did you know there were black British golfers? I thought, oh, right, no. If you see somebody like you doing it, you get more inspiration to actually think, well, yes, let me have a try, because the only people I've seen doing it didn't actually look like me. So um, when I first met Trey, it was great to see a number of women here actually enjoying golf, um, when in the past we probably didn't think it was for us. I think Formula One, I think Lewis Hamilton is only the one. I think, you know, golf, I think Tiger Woods. And then we had Trey, and he's actually in my area. And it was inspirational because I probably didn't see, and they probably do exist, but I, without social media, years ago when I was at school, I didn't see a black coach, you know, born here, bred here. And, and he, he's got a really good way of simplifying it. And I think that's what's made it more enjoyable. It's brought confidence out in me. It's shown us that us as black ladies, that we can try in the sport that's deemed as possibly an elite sport um, and that it's accessible to us. 
certainly having him here does make it feel a little bit comfortable, hey, you know. And, and um, you don't feel like in a position that you've got to kind of prove anything. We can be very relaxed. He's fantastic. He's made it very simple. Um, he's adapted for each individual so that you can understand the technique, where you place your hand, how you place your feet, and in terms of the swing shot and following through. So he's a fantastic okay. coach. Perfect. There's a couple of the kids here today's first time playing and very impressive to be honest so far. So I get a lot of enjoyment just being in the environment and being in the, the same room with some of the people that are here, just the energy that you feel when they get together and they start smiling and they start laughing. When someone hits a good shot, there's cheers, there's laughter. Even how some of the ladies have now progressed to join in further golf groups of ladies at golf clubs and now Again, this is what these sessions are about. They're about breaking down the barriers and shifting some of the players from these groups onto golf clubs so they can play golf. So for me to have an influence on that is just a real good feel good moment. So we've heard about the benefits that golf yeah. can provide, but what advice is there for people looking to take those first steps into the golfing world? I would say um, try and erase what you think golf is stereotypically and just give it a go that's it because I think a lot of people think it's oh no it's for higher class people it's for people that have got a lot of money and there are a lot of ways of playing the game now that are affordable and do allow people just to try it so just just see just see how it goes just getting to a golf course, doesn't even have to be a golf course, could be a driving range, a park or whatever. If you've got a golf club, it doesn't have to be expensive. You can go on online and find golf clubs or you can borrow, I'm sure, lots of uh, grandparents and friends. If you ask them if they've got a golf club, they probably will have one. So get a golf club in your hands, give it a go, and all of a sudden you'll find a new passion because as soon as you, like we all know here in this room, as soon as you hit that one golf shot, it comes off the club face sweet. You're grabbing the next one, you're trying to recreate that. It's a bit of a, a bit of a buzz. You get addicted to it, don't you? So just taking those first steps to a golf facility with a golf club in your hand, hitting a golf ball, and then you're going to be hooked on that game then. Please, please, please come and give golf a go just so you can learn more about yourself, so that you can build connections and make lifelong friendships. Come on down, get involved, pick up a golf club. This is your game as much as it is anybody else's. Sky Sports Golf. Feel it all.